Hello everyone, this week we're going to learn about dragons. Today I'm joined by my good buddy here, Dwight, the bearded dragon. Now we know that dragons aren't real, they're make-believe. But even though these fellas never existed, peoples from around the world have nonetheless created stories, legends, and fairy tales about them. Or at least about creatures we today would call dragons. Now where do you think people got the idea of dragons in the first place? Well, we don't really know for sure what sparked people's imaginations, but we have some likely suspects. One possibility is dinosaurs. Now, we know dinosaurs existed. We have fossils of them. And when people found some of these fossils way back in the day, they didn't know what they were, but they knew that they looked like bones, and bones to something big and ferocious. And it didn't have to be animals that were alive before people. There are plenty of animals alive today that could easily inspire stories that could become tall tales. And people have pretty amazing imaginations. We're good at coming up with creative ideas and stories, and we often imagine scary things that aren't even there. Don't worry, there definitely is not a scary monster under your bed. Trust me. Now let's look at some of the famous dragon myths and concepts from around the world. Peoples who lived around the Liao River in what is now northern China and Mongolia carved dragon figures out of a green stone called jade over 5,000 years ago. These carvings are some of the oldest representations of dragons that we have from past peoples. Dragons from this part of the world tend to look similar to these carvings even today. They usually did not have wings and instead flew by magic. Many have whiskery feelers and manes, and sometimes antlers like deer. These fellows weren't known to breathe fire, and unlike dragons from many European legends, eastern dragons were actually respected for their great powers and wisdom, and even sometimes viewed as gods. Now that sounds quite a bit different than the dragons we might be used to in stories of knights and princesses locked in towers. St. George, who became the patron saint or holy protector of England, was said to have slain an evil dragon who demanded humans a sacrifice. Now, not all European dragons were enemies. The flag of the country Wales proudly features a red dragon. The dragon came from legends dating back over a thousand years. Over time, the Welsh people came to see this dragon as a kind of mascot and protector of their nation. To a lesser extent than other parts of the world, the continent of Africa still has a number of dragon-like legends. A dragon-like creature, Ido Huedu, or the Rainbow Serpent, is a major part in the creation mythology of the Fawn, or Dahomey people of Benin in West Africa. A similar serpent, though uniquely their own, the Aboriginal peoples of Australia often describe a creator god in similar ways, linking a snake, rainbow, rain, and the seasons. American Indian peoples across the continent share similar depictions of a horned serpent that dwelt in lakes and rivers. The Cherokee called theirs Uktena, and stories of these deadly creatures usually involved heroes slaying them. The Iroquois had Onyare that lived in the Great Lakes and would capsize canoes and eat the unfortunate peoples inside them. Saint Holo of the Choctaw and Chickasaw peoples was at times a spiritual guide, but was also responsible for drowning people in its watery lair. Quetzalcoatl, a central god of the ancient Nahua people of central Mexico, took the form of a giant snake or serpent, covered in cancel feathers. The Inca, who held a vast empire in the Andes Mountains of South America prior to European conquest, had the Amaru, a two-headed winged serpent, who sometimes had the head of a jaguar, other times that of a llama, and sometimes that of a bird. And then, of course, there's my favorite dragon, Dwight. Twinkle, twinkle. 